<clears throat> it is the story is a small lie, the small lie. So Kafur then is the name of the guy. He was a slave. Where is it? Oh my God, it went all through. Okay, Kafur was a black slave. He worked for a rich merchant. During the time, the merchants, the rich merchants, they used to buy slaves and they used to keep them in their house to do manual labors. So this person who was a rich merchant, he was also a man of principle. He followed certain rules. So following him, Kafur also followed certain rules in his own life. What was the rule? He in order wanted to uh, get enslaved from his master. That is, uh, he wanted to get free from his master's slavery. He did not want to serve as a slave. So he also followed a principle. What was his principle? His principle was to tell a lie once in six months. So when this incident happened, he had already completed six months in his master's house. So it happened that uh, the master was going to have a party in one of the Rang Mahal. And he and his guest arrived at the Rang Mahal, but he forgot to take his perfume with him. Uh, as it's mentioned here as the gold fiat. And so he ordered Kafur to go home and tell his mistress to give him the uh, gold fiat so that he can take it back and give it to his um, master. So at that time, remembering his principle, he thought of telling a lie. He knew that the lie, that the outcome of this lie must, might be dangerous but it was not as dangerous as he was serving as a slave and not getting any independence. He wanted actually to teach his master a lesson. Thus he made up a story to tell a small lie. On his way to the Rang Mahal, Kafur, he rolled himself on the mud and all the mud stuck to him and he looked quite dirty. In this way he went in this condition, he went to his mistress and told him that uh, uh, as soon, uh, okay, uh, he said that a mis misfortune has befallen. What was the misfortune? That his ma master was enjoying the party when at once the wall behind him collapsed. His master and all the guests who were present all were buried inside the wall and they all died. Listening to this, the, uh, mis uh, the mistress was very unhappy and she started crying and wailing. And she said that uh, there is no means for uh, living her life as without the merchant. So it's better that you break this whole house and she did not want any kind of wealth or anything. So as Kafur was instructed by the mistress, he pulled down the house, raved the house uh, by pulling it down and all the walls and everything. He distracted everything. And meanwhile, the merchant's wife and his two daughters and all the neighbors left for the Rang Mahal. Then uh, what did Kafur do? Kafur again went back to the Rang Mahal and told that uh, suddenly the wall in the house collapsed and the mistress and her children were dumped inside the uh, wall and everyone died. 
the uh, the master was totally heartbroken and uh, he also uh, said that he did not want to live without his family and so together with his uh, guest he started moving towards his house in the meantime the mistress of children were also coming towards the rang mahal and uh, the merchant and his guest were also going towards the, uh, towards the house on the way they met each other and they thought that they had seen the ghost of each other and they were quite afraid then both of them fainted after they regained their consciousness the merchant's wife exchanged uh, to her husband what kafur had told her the merchant also told her that uh, what kafur has told him so that he created a misunderstanding between the merchant and his wife when Kaf when his merchant came to knew about this tricky feature of kafur he called kafur and he was quite um angry with him then he asked the merchant asked why did you play such trick kafur replied that he had followed his principle to tell a lie once in 6 months since he had completed 6 months in the master's service so he told the lie he also had to obey his mistress so he had to rage the house the merchant was furious you fool don't you realize that i will have to bear a very heavy cost for these damages he asked angrily undisturbed kafur said master your principle is to enslave a human being accordingly you have the right to buy or sell innocent harmless and faithful men you also have the right to beat and even kill him if you wish a man is destroyed in slavery and bondage compared to such damage and destruction a small lie of mine has not caused so much harm has it the merchant told kafur that he will no longer keep him as a slave but kafur told him that he had a contract with him for 12 months so the issue was taken up to the sultan the sultan carefully heard both the sides and he was quite impressed by the logic given by kafur so the sultan freed him from the slavery so this is the story and from the very beginning we will just read it out okay kafur was a black slave he worked for a rich merchant the master was a man of principle following his master's footsteps Kafur also followed a principle in his own life. It was to tell a small lie once in six months and to tell a big lie once in twelve months. Kafur was sold to another to another master who was a man of principle. He bought Kafur as his slave. the new master said that he himself lied so many times kafur a hard working man worked honestly sincerely and faithfully for his master and his wife they were very impressed by kafur and his work soon they began to trust him so much so that he became their personal slave One day the merchant threw a party in honor of his guest at the Rang Mahal a beautiful structure in the outskirts of the city while the party was in full swing the merchant realized that he had forgotten the gold fial of perfume at once he ordered kafur to go home and tell the mistress to give him the golden fial of perfume and come back soon obeying his master's order kafur left for the house he had completed 6 months as the merchant slave he then remembered that as per his principle it was time for him to tell a small lie 
Thus, he made up a story to tell a small lie. On his way to the house, Kafu rolled himself in the dust and the mud on the road. His hair also became completely disheveled. As soon as he reached his master's house, he began to weigh loudly. So I said, Bam Bam, please sit in front of the camera and look at your book. I can't see you, that's why. The merchant's wife heard the wailing of Kafur and came out of the house. <clears throat> she was shocked to him, shocked to see him and hear his words. Kafur started wailing even louder and said, Oh, mistress, a misfortune had befallen us. My master was enjoying the party in the Rang Mahal when all at once the wall be behind him collapsed. My master and the guest were buried alive under the debris of the wall. Unable to bear her grief at the tragic news, she started beating her chest and crying loudly. In grief, she pulled her hair and tore her own clothes. Soon her two daughters and all the neighbors gathered there to mourn the death of the merchant. The merchant's wife could not control herself. She commanded Kafur to raise their, ground to the, uh, their house to the ground. She said that she needed now no wealth nor grandeur. Obeying his mistress, Kafur took a big hammer and destroyed everything in the house. The whole house was ruined. Meanwhile, the merchant's wife, his two daughters, and all the neighbors left for Rang Mahal. Rushing back to the Rang Mahal, Kafur arrived earlier. He began to beat his chest and wail. The master asked him why he was crying. Kafur said in a broken voice, Oh master, an unexpected accident occurred in the, at the house. The mistress, your daughters and your son were buried alive when all of a sudden the wall behind them collapsed. Oh master, what a tragedy. Shocked and in deep grief, the merchant went mad and started breaking everything around him. Then everybody left for the merchant's house. As they were heading towards the house, they saw the merchant's wife and other people coming towards them. When the two crowds stood before each other, the merchant saw his wife and his wife to saw him. Oh no, this is my wife's ghost, cried the merchant. Oh no, this is my husband's ghost, cried the merchant's wife. Both of them fainted. After reigning consciousness, the merchant and his wife exchanged the news given to them by the personal slave for food. They also told each other about the damages and destruction caused by his words. The merchant called Kafu to him and said, you devil, why did you play such tricks? Kafu replied that he had followed his principle to tell a small lie once every six months. Since he had completed six months in the master's service, that day he told the lie. He said he had also to obey his mistress. The merchant was furious. You fool, don't you realize that I will have to bear very heavy cost for these damages? He asked angrily. Undisturbed, Kafur said, Master, your principle is to enslave a human being. Accordingly, you have the right to buy or sell an innocent, harmless, and faithful man. You also have the right to beat and even kill him if you wish. A man is destroyed in slavery and bondage. Compared to such damage and destruction, a small lie of mine has not caused 
so much of harm, has it? The merchant told Kafur that he would no longer keep him as a slave. But Kafur said that the stipulated period of 12 months as per the contract has not been completed. After a heated argument between the two of them, the matter was taken to the court of the Sultan. The Sultan carefully heard both the parties. Impressed with the arguments of Kafur, the Sultan freed him from the slavery. So that this is Okay, the next story is about a small boy named Rashid. Rashid, the brave boy. Let's uh, hear this story now. In a remote village in Azerbaijan, there lived a boy called Rashid. His parents <clears throat> were very poor and illiterate. They worked hard, but they had little to eat. They felt sad as Rashid could not go to school. The family did not have enough money to send him to school. Rashid's father, Yusuf, and mother, Pedos, worked for Qasim, the landlord of the village. So in a remote village, that is a village which was not so known by people and not so updated, Mm, in Azerbaijan, there lived a boy whose name was Rashid. His parents were very poor and illiterate. They worked hard, but they had very little to eat. They felt sad because they could not sell, uh, send their son Rashid to the school. Their family did not have enough money. And Rashid's father, Yusuf, and Firdos, his mother, they both of them worked for Qasim, the landlord of the village. Now this Qasim was cruel and wicked man. The landlord was very cruel and wicked. He was rich, but never helped anyone, though he had enough money, but he never helped anyone. Rashid's parents were in heavy debt to Qasim. So Rashid's parents, they were in heavy debt. At the end of the year, when Qasim showed the accounts, they found their debts increasing. So debts mean when uh, you are taking amount of money from the money lender, every time you're paying some interest in case if you're not paying, then you have to give the full money back at certain point of time. But they used to pay the interest. That means their money would gradually become lesser. But each year they saw that the money was getting more and more and it was totally uh, it was uh, uh, very hard for them to return such big amount of money a sad yusuf came home and said we still owe the landlord an enormous amount of money with a heavy heart he called his son lovingly and said rashid my son you have to help us in kasim's apple orchard Otherwise, we will not be able to repay our debt. So after seeing all the accounts, his father and mother were very unhappy. So they had no way to deal out with it. So they called their son Rashid and uh, told him that he has to help them uh, with their work in Kasim's apple orchard. Otherwise, they won't be able to pay their rent back. Father, uh, so. Uh, the boy felt sad. He wanted to help his poor parents. Yes, father, from tomorrow, I will come to Kasim's apple orchard and help both of you. Every morning when Rashid went to work in Kasim's apple orchard, he saw other children going to the village school. How happy the children looked. I wish I could join them. Rashid quietly said to himself. So he was a good boy and he always wanted to help his parents. So he confirmed them by saying that he would come to Kasim's apple orchard and help them. So every morning when Rashid went for his work in Kasim's apple orchard, he saw other children of the village going to the school and they looked very happy. He wished he could go to the school and learn to read and write. 
one day he decided to follow them. He thought that he might be able to learn something by following them to school. He saw the children sitting in a big room. He dared not enter the room and stood near the window. So one day he decided to follow the children to the school and see how they learned their lesson. So he dared not to enter the classroom as he would be thrown out. So he, stand, he stood near the window and he uh, started listening to what the teacher was uh, saying and doing. Uh, he, uh, okay, he saw the teacher reading out from a book and writing on the blackboard. He could not understand anything. After some time, the bell rang. Rashid was still standing near the window when the teacher came out of the room. So he stood near the window. He saw the teacher teaching something and writing on the blackboard. But since he was illiterate, he did not understand anything. After the bell rang, the teacher came out of his classroom. Now this Tanushri, if you really don't want to be in the class, I don't want this whiteboard right in front of the video. And Raj Lakshmi also. Okay, so what did, the, what did the teacher see when he came out of the classroom? He was surprised to see a poorly dressed boy standing near the window. Uh, standing, yes, near the window. He asked, who are you? What are you doing here? Rashid told his story. The teacher was moved and asked the boy if he was interested in learning. Rashid answered softly, yes, sir, I'm interested in learning but I cannot. I have to help my parents in the landlord's apple orchard. So when the teacher came out of his room, he saw a poor boy standing near the window and uh, he asked him, what are you doing there? Then Russia told him a story. He, the teacher was uh, overtaken and he asked Russia if he really wanted to learn, if he really wanted to read and write. So uh, after uh, listening to his story, the teacher was quite moved and he was, mm, uh, he was, uh, he agreed to teach the child. Come to my house every day after work. I will teach you, said the teacher. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I will come every day, replied a delighted Rashi. He thought that he was dreaming. So at last, Rashid's dreams came to true when the teacher told him to come to his house every day and learn. And uh, he felt quite excited and happy. He thanked his teacher. Every day after work, Rashid quietly disappeared and went to the teacher's house. He kept it a secret. He wanted to give his parents a real surprise. One day, Firdaus told her husband, I'm worried about Rashid. Where does he go after work every evening? Don't worry, he's a boy. He needs to play. Since he works all day, he must be playing with his friends in the evening. He is growing up. We have to understand it, replied Yusuf. So every day after work, uh, Rashid quietly uh, disappeared and went to the teacher's house and he kept it a secret. He did not want anybody to know that he is uh, learning how to read and write. He kept it as a big surprise for his parents. So one day his parents were quite um, worried and they asked, they, uh, uh, his, uh, does, his mom asked his father that I'm worried about Rashid, where he goes every evening. His father told that he's a boy, he needs to play and that uh, he is growing up, so he must have gone to play after a hard day's work. Time passed and the year was coming to an end. Kasim, the landlord, was busy making his plans. He called his accountant and said, get Yusuf's paper ready. Tomorrow we will get his thumb impression. You know what to do. He quietly laughed and thought, how good it is that these poor peasants are illiterate. They cannot read and write. If they were educated, we can never play these tricks on them. 
So as time passed, the year came to an end and this cunning landlord Kasim, he was making plans of how to cheat on to the poor peasants again. So he called to the accountant and said, we will go to Yusuf's house tomorrow to so get his papers ready, to get him signed that he had paid more than he had done and to um, always keep him unbounded. Uh, next, uh, he thought in his mind that these poor peasants are illiterate, which is good for him. If they were literate, they would have read what on, on the paper where he uh, took the uh, thumb impression of these peasants and they would never have agreed to it. And an angry Kasim, uh, oh, sorry, again, this part I missed out. Okay, then uh, uh, his, uh, the person, mm, the accountant then told him that, sir, we may have problem this time. When I passed by the school teacher's house yesterday, I saw him teaching Yusuf's sons Rashid to read and write, replied the accountant. An angry cousin shouted, this school teacher is spoiling the village. I have to do something. Rashid should not get home early tomorrow. The school teacher lived in the neighboring village. The following day, when Rashid returned home in the evening, he found the village entrance shut, but it was still too early. So his accountant told that he has seen uh, this uh, boy Rashid going to the teacher's house and learning how to read and write, and that might create a problem for him. So Kasim was very angry about it. And next day, when Rashid went to his teacher's house while returning, the village entrance was closed, though it was not late. It was done uh, knowingly, okay, by Kasim. Who has done this? How should I go home? I cannot climb these, the walls. They are too high and the stones are slippery. A worried Rashid thought deeply. He was brave and clever. He immediately thought of a plan to reach home. I will go to the backside where there is a small opening made by the boys while playing, but I will have to climb the mountains to reach there. So at this time, Rashid was very thoughtful of how to get back home. As the gate was closed, and he thought of going through the walls of the uh, building, uh, walls of the building, but uh, that too, he had to climb the mountains and go through it. On the mountains, there were a lot of scary things awaiting for him. The mountain path was dangerous. The rocks were slippery. There were also a number of wild animals in the mountains, but Rashid decided to use the mountain path. He always carried a matchbox when he returned home in the evening. So the actual path of the mountains was dangerous and scary. There were wild animals, frightening things, but luckily he always carried a matchstick with him whenever he returned home. <coughs> home. In the meantime, Kasim and his accountant reached Yusuf's house. Kasim smiled wickedly. Yusuf, today is the day when you will have to put your thumb impression on the papers. As usual, I have prepared your accounts. Yusuf was tense. He did not want to put his thumb impression on the papers anymore. So in the meantime, what uh, he uh, Kasim locked the gate and uh, he went to Yusuf's house so that Rashid cannot get uh, there in time. So he told that Yusuf, I have come here to take your sign on the papers and <coughs> as usual. So, um, but uh, Yusuf was not agreeing to put his uh, thumb impression anymore. He was very uncomfortable. So he, in order to uh, ease away the time, he told that my wife is preparing a bowl of soup for you. Please have it first. He was thinking a way of way to avoid putting his thumb impression on the papers. I will have the soup, but hurry up. You have to finish putting your thumb impression. Kasim told, yes, surely I will be having the soup, but you have to hurry up to put your thumb impression. I have to go to other places also, replied Kasim. Kasim told that he had to go to other places uh, to take the 
outcome impression of other peasants. Meanwhile, Rashid was making his way along the mountain path. It was dark. His heart pounded. The rocks were treacherous, but another danger lurked nearby. He found that a pack of hungry wolves were following him. Soon they surrounded him. Rashid thought frantically. He could not afford to remain like that. As the wolves prepared to attack, Rashid took his shirt off. Then he tied it to a stick and lighted it with a burning matchstick. Holding it like a torch, he cried loudly. As he swung the torch, the wolves retreated. <coughs> Thus Rashid bravely drove the wolves away. Holding the burning shirt, he quickly made his way back home. So when he uh, was going through the mountain path, it was quite dark. His heart was beating fast. The rocks were very slippery and <coughs> it was not only the uh, rocks, there were other dangers which were in front of me, with, sorry, in front of him. Uh, there was a pack of hungry wolves on his path and they wanted to eat him. As luckily he had a matchstick with him, so he opened his shirt and on a stick he tied it and then lighted his shirt and he started um, waving it, it as a torch in front of the wolves to drive them away. So at last he was successful in driving them away and he followed back home. As Kasim finished gulping the soup, he called Yusuf. Now hurry up, put your thumb impression on the papers. I have to leave. A helpless Yusuf reached out for the inkboard. So as uh, Yusuf, uh, sorry, Kasim had already finished his mm, soup, he told Yusuf to put his finger impression so that he can leave. So Yusuf had no other way but to do it. So he, uh, when he drew the paper near him, suddenly the door swung open. A breathless Rashid rushed in and shouted, wait, father, don't do it. Let me see the papers first. Kashim was shocked and surprised. You little brat, how impudent you are. Don't waste my time. You are illiterate like your parents, you know. So at this, uh, when Rashid rushed out to his father and told him not to put his finger uh, impression on the paper and to let him see the paper, Kasim was very angry. He told him a little brat and told him not to waste his time and to do his work. Yusuf spoke quietly. Rashid, my dear boy, you will not understand what is written there. What's the use? Rashid took the papers from his father and started reading aloud. He spoke firmly. Kasim, you are a crew. The paper says that my father owes you 2,000 manat. What is this? Come to the commissioner tomorrow. Bring all the early accounts. The school teacher will read it out in detail. He knows many things about you. So Yusuf, his father, told him that, uh, my dear Rashid, you will, not uh, you will not understand what is written here. It's better that you leave it out. But Rashid, he took the paper and he saw that he, his father has only taken 2,000 manat from uh, Kasim, whereas it was every day, every day, every year, it was increasing. So he told uh, Kasim as a crew and told him that uh, he has to go uh, in front of the police and surrender himself. And the school teacher will also be there to help out and to, um, and to uh, uh, tell all the details. A delightful Yusuf and Fidas hug, hug their son. Dear son, we are so proud of you. Next day, the fraud of Kasim was disclosed and the commissioner punished him by sending him to prison. Rashid's family and several other peasants were freed from the trinical clutches of the evil landlord. Rashid became a hero in the village. So at this, Yusuf and Fidas' his parents were very happy and they uh, expressed their proudness about their son. And next day, the fraud of Kasim was brought to light in front of the commissioner. He was sent to prison and Rashid family and several other families were freed from the clutches of this 
evil Kasim. And uh, Rashid became a hero of the village and uh, uh, Kasim was sent to, sent to jail. So this is the story about Rashid.